Today, we're going to be talking about the Denver Lane Gangster Bloods versus the Inglewood Family Gangster Bloods. Yeah. All right. Let's get into it. The Denver Lane Gangster Bloods or the Figueroa Rider Gang are an African-American street gang formed in the 1970s named after a residential street called Denver Avenue between Hoover and Figueroa Street, located on the west side of South Central Los Angeles. With the Vermont Vista neighborhood been a stronghold for the Denver Lane Gangster Bloods. And the rest of your neighborhood stretched from 105th Street to 120th Street between Vermont and Grand Avenue. The Inglewood Family Gangster Bloods are a predominantly African-American street gang formed in the early 1970s before the Blood Alliance was created. It's believed that the IFs were started by Jan Brewer and some of the early members of this neighborhood during the 1970s included Dirty Red, Tommy Arks, Sick Mick, and JR. Their neighborhood stretched from Crenshaw Avenue to Van Ness Avenue between 77th Street to 94th Street. And the Inglewood family gangster bloods have several cliques, such as 77th Street, Rolling 80s, 92nd Street, 94th Street, and the Ransom Gang. These are two of the most notorious gangs in Los Angeles County. So a war between the two resulted in more than a few bodies being dropped on both sides. Before 2013, the Denver Lane Gangster Bloods and the Inglewood Family Gangster Bloods were friendly. But on February 9th, 2013, the two gangs had a party at Normandy Casino, and at first, everything was solid. The two gangs were smoking, drinking, and gambling together. But a small feud between two opposing gang members escalated into a fight between the two blood gangs. And this wasn't one of those, hey, let's get it in, and then it's kumbaya after. Nah, it was war after that. It's alleged that guns were pulled on several sides and several threats were made. So tension between the two gangs was at an all-time high. And after that, both gangs were ready for war. And that's exactly how it played out. About four hours later, Trayvon Odom, a known member of the Denver Lane Gangster Bloods who attended the party, was murdered by an Inglewood Family Gangster Blood member. And a few days after that, on February 12, 2013, Inglewood Family Gangster Bloods member Clarence Grant, also known as Big Clayron, was murdered and the war between the two gangs was started from then. At about 3.20 p.m. on February 13, 2013, John Williams was driving on Imperial, approaching Menlo Street, when a man on a bicycle swerved into his lane about 15 feet ahead. As Williams braked, a man ran into the street and fatally shot the bicyclist in the back three times with a handgun. The shooter was wearing a black security uniform and a white t-shirt underneath. He appeared to be between 5'10 and 6'1 when it came to height, and he had a medium build. His hair was in a short afro, and he wore glasses. Williams watched the shooter run into a champagne-colored Camry, all of them at the curve. The car pulled away, and his horn started to hunt several times, almost like a party on a horn. On September 9, 2013, detectives showed Williams a six-pack photogenic lineup. Williams eliminated four photographs and then debated between photographs three and four, but believed that the person in photograph three Donnie Lee Walton, a known member of the Inglewood family gangster Bloods, looked more like the shooter based on his eyes, nose, eyebrows, and facial structure. The eyes and nose really stood out. None of the persons in the photographs wore glasses, though. A few days after the first murder, on February 15, 2013, at about 9 p.m., Leon Hall was with Robinson at a commercial intersection near Vermont and Imperial, just north of the 105 freeway. Robertson, a wannabe gang member, was wearing red, a color generally associated with the blood gangs. The two sat on the wall outside a fast food restaurant. At around 9.49 p.m., a man walked up and asked Hal, where you from? Hal responded, I'm from Texas. The man then asked Robertson where he was from, but before he could respond, the man pulled out a gun and shot him. As Robertson lay on the ground, the shooter stood over him and fought at least once more. The shooter then walked away and got into a black Yukon. Charles Jeffries was stopped at the intersection of Vermont and Imperial when he saw the two men square off. One man fired two shots at the other. A car then pulled up and then the shooter jumped in. Jeffries followed the vehicle and obtained his license plate number. He returned to the scene of the shooting and gave the number to the Los Angeles County Sheriff. Dale Breer also witnessed the shooter from his car. He saw the shooter jump into a dark green Yukon. He called 911 and reported the shooting and the Yukon's license plate number. Robinson died from multiple gunshot wounds. The surveillance vehicle from the nearby liquor store depicted a black man walking southbound of Vermont and then crossing the street. Another black man was near the fast food restaurant. 
The first man raised his hand and the other man fell to the ground. The first man quickly walked away on Vermont and got into a black SUV waiting at the curve. An investigation took several months, but after a few hunches and tips from the public, the pigs finally had a suspect. And on September 10th, 2013, detectives interviewed Clarence Grant. He said Walton borrowed his father's Yukon after his father's murder, as well as Grant's cell phone. Walton said, let me use your phone. You stay with mama. I don't want you to be a part of nothing. After the interview, the detectives placed Grant Jr. in a live lineup. Grant Jr. was then put in a cell with two law enforcement officials. Grant told the detectives, they showed me a picture of the big homie at the gas station with a little shit shit happened. And blood on camera and all that. Grant Jr.'s reference to blood was to Walton. Grant Jr. said, the picture they got is the car pulling up to the gas station and Nutty Boy getting out of the car. They got Nutty Boy getting out the car. Prosecutors believe the rivalry developed between the Denver Lane Bloods and Inglewood families following the Normandy Casino fight. Later that night or early the next morning, a prominent Denver Lane Blood member was killed. The Denver Lanes held the Inglewood families responsible and within a week, there were nine shootings between the gangs with five fatalities, including Gant Senior, a prominent figure from the Inglewood family Bloods. It was the gang's experts' opinions that the last two described murders were committed in the direction of and for the benefit of the Inglewood family gangster Bloods. In the end, Donnie Lee Walton was convicted of two counts of murder and two counts of being a felon for possession of a firearm. And the courts sentenced him to six terms of life without the possibility of parole. Nobody won this war. It was bodies dropped on both sides and several people who lost their life due to prison. This was almost 10 years ago. My only question is, is the beef between the Inglewood families and the different lanes still active or has it died off since then? Or is there still tension between the two? Y'all let me know in the comments, man. Let's have a conversation about it. Hopefully it's all in the past. Subscribe. Hit that bell if it went well. Y'all stay safe and dangerous out there.